Welcome to 6.5 on the Road. I'm Dave Nicholson and I'm here at HPE Discover Las Vegas 2025. I have a very special guest, Varma Kunaparaju. He is HPE's SVP and General Manager of Cloud Platform. And we're gonna talk about cloud. We're gonna talk about hybrid cloud. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's great to have Pleasure. you here. I wanna dive right in and get your perspective on where we are in the hybrid cloud space. Specifically, how would you define the modern operating model for hybrid cloud? Now that we're in the middle of not only generative AI, but agentic AI. What is the operating model for hybrid cloud today, Farmer? A great question. You know, if you look at the journey of an enterprise um, from last decade, you know, the world of IT is more and more a combination of edge to cloud, you know, and, and, and that edge to cloud consists of on-prem locations, private clouds, data centers, and public clouds. So the infrastructure that an enterprise needs to deal with to run their application workloads is now more than ever before federated from all these locations. And enterprises estates are also multi-vendor, not a single vendor in the entire estate, and multi-cloud. So the operating model for an enterprise IT is to deal with this hybrid multi-vendor, multi-cloud estates and bring all the applications, more and more cloud native and more and more AI native applications on top of a variety of runtime environments. You know, in the, in the old days, runtime is primarily, you know, either running on physical hardware or a virtualized hardware now yeah. with containers and Kubernetes and, you know, the workloads are, you know, all kinds of runtime spring into play. So that is what an enterprise IT needs to deal with to make their end end, end customers applications deliver what the outcomes that they need to deliver. Do you, do you think that uh, sort of the dawn of AI and AI workloads, um, has that validated the value of having some IT on premises? Do you, see, do you see people taking a harder look at on premises parts of their IT because of AI or, or, has it, or is, has that not been a factor? Yeah, no, for AI, data is one of the most resilient things that you know, that ultimately feeds the outcomes for, you know. And data is by nature, you know, is spread. It's no longer every piece of the data is in the cloud that, you know, and the data is resident where the actual collection of the data is taking place, right? So as a result, I see AI bringing some of the workloads and the fine tuning of those workloads, fine tuning of the AI models really call for bringing certain aspects of those applications come to private or hybrid data centers. And uh, we, you know, we've, we've, we've heard a lot of announcements this week, um, starting with a keynote from Antonio in the Sphere. Where does, uh, let's talk about the developments in OpsRamp and, uh, and how that fits into an operational model for, for hybrid cloud. Yeah. What, what's the latest there? The, the latest is two, two, two aspects. One aspect is OpsRamp's native evolution as a product in terms of its roadmap and bringing full stack observability with the uh, uh, entire estate, you know, and post acquisition of HPE, we have continued our journey in terms of our multi-vendor, multi-cloud support. You know, not only supporting HP infrastructure, but more importantly, all other vendors and multi, multiple hyperscaler support because the workloads are going to be distributed in that. That's number one. Number two is the natural product evolution for full stack observability and our AI um, journey. You know, last year we announced our copilot for uh, OpsRamp and we continue to evolve that copilot capability with generative. Uh, LLM models, as well as you know, the models that really allow us to fine tune based on the, all the data that we collected to be able to do root cause. So the evolution of the root cause and root cause analysis around our copilot is what we are demonstrating on the floor today, and we we continue to evolve that observability um, as a stack. Where it fits in the HPE's overall strategy is very interesting. You know, with the Green Lake, we wanted every enterprise to be operating their hybrid cloud, multi-vendor, multi multi-cloud workload. So OpsRamp plays a very important role in bringing that uh, observability that is needed 
the visibility that is needed to be able to operate those things. So as a result, we integrated OpsRamp into the GreenLake platform and giving that value proposition both for the consumers of GreenLake platform where they're consuming HPE solutions as well as in a standalone mode con consume that technology for their observability needs. GreenLake's been around for a while. And uh, initially, it's like, okay, of course, HPE needs to have a hybrid cloud, private cloud strategy, of course. AI comes along, and I know it wasn't a surprise to, to, to us, you know, AI in various forms has been around for a while. But the talk around GreenLake intelligence, make the case for why GreenLake intelligence is a real thing and not just AI washing of, of something that you already had. It's a bit of a leading question. It's a softball question because we've seen some of the pretty cool things that you're doing in just in networking and storage as an example. But make the case for GreenLake intelligence. Why is it intelligent? Why, is, why, is it, why isn't it just the old regular GreenLake yeah. nowadays? I think and I probably frame the answer in two, two legs. One leg of the journey is the evolution of GreenLake platform, organic investments that HPE made for a long time to bring their edge to cloud our edge to cloud entire stack as a service to the end customers. Mm -hmm. That journey has been going on to kind of, that's where a lot of investments were made to kind of really make that platform as the single platform to deliver the hybrid cloud, you know, edge to cloud delivered as a service. Along the journey, you know, we recognize there is assets that are required for day zero, day one provisioning and orchestration, day two, Autom um, oper observability and automation. That's where we made the acquisitions, inorganic acquisitions like Morpheus, which brings yeah. the VME, as well as provisioning and orchestration or automation layer, and then the observability layer that comes from OpsRamp. So if you look at all of that stack, the fundamentals of that stack will really allow now a, a Gen AI and AI-based intelligence layer to be brought on top of domain-specific agentic work that is taking place. You probably heard from Aruba team about their agentic journey on how they are trying to solve certain common use cases without a human operator involved yeah. in, in resolving network issues. Similarly, in the stories, our new Electra series is carrying a agentic framework to be able to kind of do domain-specific intelligence. Now, if you combine these domain-specific intelligence layers that are taking place and bring all of them together under a GreenLake intelligence, which is a, a framework for providing agentic AI ops across all the domains. And because of the nature of integrations that we did with observability, which is bringing multi-vendor, multi-cloud SDs, now the intelligence layer that we are bringing in GreenLake can not only support the multi-domain solutions that HP is offering, but for broader operations footprint of an enterprise for improving their mean time to detect, mean time to resolve, with human operators equipped with intelligence to be able to kind of carry those tasks. Yeah, it's an, it's an interesting point. A lot of people today, business leaders, are and some with very little technical experience, when they ask the question, how do I get ROI out of this AI thing? They're often thinking first of, answering the question, what kind of shiny new object can I invent that will create a new business? Okay, how does AI make me money? The other side of the coin is, how does AI save me money? Do you think it's a relevant answer or a, or a, or a realistic answer to the question, what should I first do with AI? Can the answer be, optimize your infrastructure. Focus on infrastructure that's leveraging AI behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Almost in a way that you, you, you won't even be aware of it except those efficiencies will deliver cost savings to your business, regardless of the business that you're in. I mean, would that be an HP argument for, or an HPE answer to the question, what's the first thing I should do it's a in the world of AI? I mean, is it, is it fo focusing on infrastructure? Yeah, great question. And I think there are two, in my view, two different aspects to that. One aspect is obviously your spend on the infrastructure, whether it's public clouds or private clouds or hybrid infrastructures, how do you kind of um, basically optimize your infrastructure for capacity and growth and resiliency that you need to do, right? Number one is improve the mean time 
to repair mean time to detect is the operational aspect. Number two is how do you make the workloads perform at the level that they need to perform to be able to give the outcomes that needs to be given. So both of those aspects in conjunction with optimizing your infrastructure right. for delivering what needs to be remembered, if you are optimizing it and not delivering what you need to deliver, it's not going to work. So, you know, you need to kind of, these two are orthogonal vectors in some ways, right? You know, you need to optimize, but at the same time, you need to deliver the outcomes that you need to deliver. So that's what I think, you know, our Green Lake Intelligence is trying to kind of deliver that value proposition for enterprises. Yeah, I think it's hard for some business leaders to get away from the desire for the shiny object, but the shiny object that sometimes is the most amazing is optimizing infrastructure this way, where you're, you're putting dollars to the bottom line. Uh, and it's really fascinating. Uh, do you have any thoughts on the challenges around cooling or energy consumption in this space? Just out, just, just out of curiosity, yeah. what, what, what does that look like from an HPE perspective? I think, you know, if you, if you remember one of the applications that the GreenLake platform delivers is the sustainability footprint, uh, carbon footprint of, you know, and, and sustainability, overall footprint of entire stack that an enterprise is doing. And that is a, we call it sustainability insight center that has been delivered on GreenLake platform. Now, because of our multi-vendor instrumentation that we brought through OpsRamp into GreenLake platform, we can now get the footprint of the, the carbon footprint as well as power consumption footprint of all the multi-vendor estate and being able to give that insight to an end customer, you know, to be able to optimize. Now with, gen, with AI, you know, Gen AI and AI frameworks, you have an opportunity to optimize that carbon footprint by either moving the workloads to where it needs to be, where it is more better consumed, better consumption, uh, power consumption and better workload um, delivery models exist. That those, op those opportunities and insights can be obtained through the through the GreenLake platform today, and those and that green ops pillar, if yeah. you will, at least in uh, in the U.S., that green also translates into green dollars. Yes. So yes, carbon footprint, also those efficiencies from an energy perspective, always deliver dollar savings. Pharma, thanks so much for uh, sitting and having this conversation about hybrid cloud and the operational model. Um, do you have any final thoughts on, you know, this this idea of where hybrid cloud and the operation around hybrid cloud is headed? I think in my view, the silos in running hybrid cloud operations um, it created a lot of opportunities to really bring with AI and Gen AI journey to a, a new age of AI ops um, that brings a unified view into overall operations across SRE, DevOps, TechOps, IT ops, bringing them together to be able to efficiently deliver outcomes, which are business services that end, end customers and end business units are asking from either service providers or from enterprises, enterprise ITs. So that's where I think, you know, the opportunity to leverage the new uh, advances that took place in the last six months around AI and intelligence, and that's what we are driving towards GreenLake Intelligence to deliver. It's a great point to wrap on. To business leaders out there, sometimes chasing the shiniest of objects and the most exciting of use cases sounds great, but don't take your eye off of what I would call the infrastructure ball. Um, operations around hybrid cloud is where it's at. It's where you're going to drive money to your bottom line. And if that's not exciting for you, uh, please move aside and let somebody else take your job. <laughs> Varma, thanks again. Thank you. We're six five on the road, broadcasting here at HPE Discover Las Vegas 2025. I'm Dave Nicholson. Thanks for joining us and stay tuned for more interesting content.